Amen. Amen. Excellent job. Excellent job. God bless you. God bless you. Good to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. Good to see those who were traveling last night. You have made it uh, this morning to be here with us. Uh, I like that, Pastor. One member, one envelope. <laughs> I'm taking that back to the United States. I said last night, they introduced me, I got 3,000 members in my church. And if every member... <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> One member! One member! Next Sabbath, I'm going to say, one member, one envelope. Do I have a witness in this place? <laughs> I like that. Maranatha Masala. Maranatha Masala. Ooh, yes, ooh, in Yeza. Amen. Thank you to our conference president, Pastor Mbaza. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor May, thank you. God bless you. And to all of you. Is that May? May? My dad. <laughs> My dad. I'm trying. You won't call me Beard, so I can. Dr. Beard, Dr. Bird, okay? <laughs> pastor, Pastor, God bless you and to all of you. What's my name? All right, we, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Let me give him the word today. Are you ready for the word? Let me hear you say amen. amen. All right, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, all right. want to make sure you can hear me. We're going to go to the book of 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. We have a practical sermon for you this morning, this early afternoon. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. All right. 1 Corinthians 13. If you have it, let me hear you say amen. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, that's love, I am become as sounding brass or as tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, love, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I could preach a whole sermon on that. <laughs> For now we see through a, dark, through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love, is charity. Today, I want to talk to you about relationships. 
So I've entitled our message, Goodbye Relationship Drama. Let's pray. God, now come into this tent. Make yourself known and speak to your people. Hide behind your cross. Forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name. Amen. One of the most interesting things to observe today are the relationships that people find themselves in. Because many people have never had a blueprint or seen a positive relationship. They just pretty much mirror or behave to what they have been exposed to. So then if all they've seen are drama-filled relationships, then that's what they find themselves in. Drama-filled relationships. Many young ladies have never been taught what a godly wife is. Many young men have never been taught what a godly husband is. And so for some people, when they look through their family trees, it's hard for them to find a positive marital relationship where they can say, I want to be just like that. In fact, in our world, unlike the church, the media celebrates things like having a child first, we'll get married later. Living together first, we'll get married later. Years ago, I'm 45 years old now, and years ago, I don't care what church you went to. I don't care what denomination you were a part of. If you lived together as a man and a woman, and you didn't have the same last name, uh -huh. it was wrong. Now in the United States, we call it shacking. Shacking was wrong. Cohabitation was wrong. Living together and you weren't married, it was wrong. But today it's becoming thrilling and popular to change mates as often as one changes magazine subscriptions. <laughs> drama fills relationships today, and if you engage in drama long enough, you'll start believing it's normal. It's normal for me to be treated like a dog. It's normal for me to play myself. It's normal for me to deal with physical and verbal abuse. And so what you've done is that which is abnormal, you have made normal. The Bible has a lot to say about relationships, what to do and what not to do. Now, in a positive relationship, a drama free relationship, love is supposed to be evident. Paul says love suffereth long and is kind. He says love envieth not, vaunteth not itself. Love, he says, is not puffed up. Uh, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own. Love, he says, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Love rejoiceth not in iniquity, but it rejoices in truth. Love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. That's what love is in a relationship. And if you don't want a drama-filled relationship, there are four things I want to share with you this morning that I believe you need in your relationship. So for the single folks, if you're single, let me see your hand. All right. For the single folks, put your hands down. Somebody said, I'm single, but I want to be married. For the single folks, this message is prevention. And for the married folks, let me see those who are married. All right. For the married folks, this is prescription. So for the singles, you're getting prevention. For those who are married, you're getting prescription. And so we're going to all get something from Dr. Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Point number one. Reciprocity. Everybody say reciprocity. Any positive relationship has to be one of reciprocity. What does that mean? Reciprocity means exchanging things with others 
for mutual benefit. Reciprocity means give and take. Reciprocity means I'll bring the ice cream, but you got to bring the cake. But I'm not going to bring the ice cream and the cake. Reciprocity means that I'm going to bring the peanut butter, but you're going to bring the jelly. But I'm not bringing peanut butter and jelly. Reciprocity means I bring the fish and you bring the chips, but I'm not bringing the fish or the soya meat and chips. Reciprocity means you have to love her and she has to love you. Reciprocity means he had, you have to love him and he has to love you. And the first time you know something is wrong is when the person you're in love with, you can't even get them to say the words to you. Well, I care about you. I'm really in like with you. <laughs> there is something wrong when you're always the one calling. They've got your home number, your work number, your cell number, but you're always the one calling. There's something wrong with that. I'm trying to help somebody today. You're always the one giving, and they never give anything. You're always the one supporting, and they're never there to support you. You're always the one running behind them, and they never run behind you. You've got to make up in your mind that I'm coming out of these one-sided relationships I, where I'm always the one that has to give something, and I never get anything in return. Which means if I can call you, then you can call me. If I can email you, then you can email me. If I can rub your feet. Then you can rub my feet. If I can buy gifts for you, then you can buy gifts for me. If I can do nice things for you, you can do nice things for me. You've got to make up in your mind, I'm going to stop falling in love with people who don't even like me. Because there are some folk in this tent right now who are in love with folk who can barely stand you. But not only that, can I go a little deeper? You still love me? All right, I'm going to go a little deeper. There needs to be some reciprocity when it comes to your faith system, your belief system, your moral system, understand your value system, your love and understanding for God and the things of God. I am tired of seeing all these young people with godly promise on their lives and as soon as you meet somebody, they're not in church they don't want to hear anything about God and you let them bring you down to their level. Now you can't come to church. You don't have time for choir rehearsal. You don't have any money, one member, one envelope to give God. <laughs> because you're traveling and hanging out with them, eating out, buying any and everything and you're paying for everything. But God says, why can't you bring them up to your level? Why don't you say to them, if you're going to be with me, you're going to have to come to church. Because as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Do I have a witness in this place? You've got to tell them, I believe in salvation in Jesus Christ. I believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. I believe that when Jesus comes back, the dead in Christ are going to rise. And then we which are alive remain are going to be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I believe in the Ten Commandments. I believe in the Sabbath. I believe in commitment. I believe in honesty. I believe in integrity. I believe in good credit.
You see, for some people, you think God is giving you to them to change them. But let me tell you something. You can't change anybody. Only Jesus can do that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you ought to know by now that if they're not going to do what God says do, you should know they're not going to do what you say do. So, brothers, when the relationship is of God, sisters, when the relationship is of God, then your goals, your dreams, your desires, what God has placed within you will be the same goals, dreams, and desires that God will place in your future spouse. There's no way you could want salvation and they don't. There's no way you could want the best out of life and they don't because you're bone of my bone. You're flesh of my flesh. What hurts you hurts me. What makes you happy makes me happy. There must be reciprocity. Good by relationship drama. You still love me? I'm going to go a little further. Somebody's going to get mad, but I'm going to say it anyway. So they say, well, they'll never have you back in South Africa. I already got a call that I can come back in September. Come on, say amen. I'm convinced that Christians ought to date Christians. Christians ought to marry Christians. Adventists ought to date Adventists. Adventists ought to marry Adventists. And notice I said Christians first and Adventists second because there are some Adventists who aren't Christians. I wish I had a witness in this place. If dogs can get with dogs, cats can get with cats, fish can get with fish, then Christians ought to get with Christians. Adventists ought to get with Adventists because the Bible says in Amos 3, 3, how can two walk together lest they agree? You don't have time to be changing anybody. You better be changed before you get with me. That's what you ought to be telling somebody. You ought to tell somebody, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. And anybody that loves me has to love me like Jesus loves me. Number two, after reciprocity, everybody say responsibility. responsibility. Now, when we talk about the marital relationship, we can look at the first marriage in the Garden of Eden between Adam and Eve. In Genesis 2, when God deals with Adam, there are some things that God does to Adam before God allows Adam to have a wife. In Genesis 2, God makes sure Adam deals with responsibility by making sure Adam has a job. Before Adam gets married, Adam has a job. Adam has dominion over the animals, over the garden. Before Adam gets a wife, God makes sure Adam is responsible. Adam has a job. I don't think you heard me. Let me say it one more time. Before Adam gets a wife, God makes sure Adam has a job, a J-O-B. And ladies, you ought not set your standard lower than God. If God is requiring employment and responsibility, you ought to require it as well. Stop listening to all this. I'm getting ready to. I'm fitting to. I'm getting a job. I'm thinking about it. I'm working on something. No, no, no. I need you to work, not working on. I'm tracing my dream. I don't mind you chasing, tracing your dream and chasing your dream. But while you're chasing your dream, you need to be working a nine to five to support yourself while you're chasing your dream. And if you can't have million dollar uh, dreams with minimum wage work ethic, let me tell you something. I got three girls, 16, 14, and 
and three. I'm a modern day Abraham. Come on, say amen. <laughs> Praise God, it still works. Do I have a witness in this place? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm still good. I don't need blue pills. I got Jesus. What are you saying, everybody? <laughs> Hallelujah. But when my girls, 16, 14, and 3, are of sufficient age to date, because they're not of sufficient age right now, Somebody say, what you mean? You got a six-year-old. She's not of sufficient age. That's right. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old is too early to date. You want to go out on a date? Go out on a group date. <laughs> we go on a group date. Where are you going? We go on a youth congress on a group date. Everybody date each other. Come on, say amen. Everybody, everybody be friends. But when they are of sufficient age to date, and then marry. Yes, I want them to love the brother and I want him to love them. But the brother has to be able to take care of my girls. He has to have responsibility. Love beareth all things. Love bears responsibility. Before Adam got married, God gave Adam a job. So my girls, I tell them, your motto to that young man is this. If you want to be with me, you got to get a J-O-B. What am I talking about? You see, I'm a twin. And my brother and I, my daddy made us work. I never will forget when we finished primary school. After we graduated, that very next day, we graduated that Friday, and then we had the Sabbath, then we had Sunday. Monday morning, I never will forget it. 14 years old, just finished primary school. And my daddy said to my brother and I, he said, listen, I am taking you to the neighborhood plaza, mall, that's what you call it. And he said, don't come home until you have a job. And we had to go from store to store until we found a job because he was teaching us responsibility. You got to be responsible, not just men, but women, too. Be responsible. Handle your business. If you can't handle your business, if you're still a mama's boy or a daddy's girl, you don't need to be getting married. You still love me? Can I go a little further? Reciprocity, responsibility. Number three, respect. You've got to have respect, young people, for yourself, and for others. Now let's talk about respect so we make sure we know what I mean when I say respect. Everybody say respect. respect. All right, talking about respect. Brothers, stop trying to holler at every woman that walks by. All this, all this. Is there a snake in here? That's exactly what Satan did to Eve in the Garden of Eden. Stop trying to holler at every woman that walks by. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying don't be a man because you're going to be a man. Please be a man. We've got enough question marks and confusion now. Please be a man. But stop trying to holler at every woman that comes your way because what will happen is this. You will develop an understanding of women where you will look for a wife or a girlfriend like you look for a car. Can I break that down to you? You know, when you shop for a car, the first thing you do is you go to as many car lots as possible. Number two. You always want to know how that body looks. Three, you want to test drive before you purchase. 
Number four, you're curious about how much mileage it has and how many previous owners it has had. Preach, Pastor Bird, I'm doing the best I can. Number five, you want the most out of it with the least possible cost. All the ladies in the house, turn to that man and look at that man and tell him you can't drive this. Some of you came to Youth Congress to test drive. You can't drive this. Ladies, repeat after me. Say, I'm not for sale. I'm not for sale. Now, ladies, let me get on you. Ladies, because you're not for sale, you need to take off all these for sale and on sale signs. church with on sale and for sale all this out this up to here this down to here it's not of God I hear people all the time say well God said come as you are when God is being referenced as saying come as you are God is saying come with your heart as you are and God will change your heart Create within me a clean heart and renew the right spirits within me. But when you come as you are, you come with your best. Your best may be different than my best. My best may be different than your best, but you ought to come in your best. When you say come as you are, you're talking about, Lord, I'm coming with my heart just as I am. But you got to take off. All these for sale and on sale signs. And let me just throw this in because I see some older folk out here. It's not just the young people either. We got some old folks walking around with on sale and for sale signs. Everybody, say everybody, everybody. needs to act appropriately. And when I say that, that's everybody. Let me tell you, I don't care how old you are. Let me tell you this, when we hug and greet at church, hug and keep it moving. All these long hugs are not appropriate. Stand up, young man. Brothers, when the brothers hug each other, stop all this cheek-to-cheek -cheek mess. Yeah. You shake your hand. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Come here. Brothers, when you hug the ladies, Appropriately. Speak appropriately. Text message appropriately. Don't text message anything you're not prepared to see again. 
email appropriately. Behave appropriately. Married people are to do what married people are supposed to do, and unmarried people only do what unmarried people are supposed to do. So if you're unmarried, quit doing permanent things with temporary people. Let's stay in Genesis 2 for a minute. The Bible says in Genesis 2 that when God created Eve, he took a rib, one rib out of Adam, which means you can't go around with a slab of ribs. One rib, one means one. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But if you also read Genesis chapter 2, verse 22, ladies, because this is an equal opportunity sermon. God presented Eve to Adam. The Bible says in verse 22, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and he brought her to the man. The Bible says that God brought the woman to the man. What am I trying to say? God brought the woman to the man. Ladies, let God present you. Stop trying to present yourself. Let God present you. I've got to let him see me and I've got to get up close to him so he can see me. I've got to be in his view. No, let God present you. Think about it, friends of mine, in Genesis 2. God put Adam to sleep. And we don't know how long God let Adam sleep before he woke up and he presented Eve to him. Ladies, you know what that means? It's not your job to wake Adam up. with your future husband and you like him and you may be the one for him but he doesn't know it yet because he's asleep. Some of you go to church with your future husband and you may be the one for him but he doesn't know it because he's still asleep. But you don't have to wake him up. You don't have to stalk him. You don't have to run behind him. You don't have to sweat him. You don't have to be in his face all the time. No good man wants a desperate woman. Remember this counsel, men and women, remember this counsel. Women fall in love and get married. Women fall in love and get married. Men decide to get married and then look for a wife. Women fall in love and get married. Men decide to get married and look for a wife. Remember that. Not only that, brothers and sisters, when we talk about respect, respect your spouse when it comes to your parents. The Bible says leave and cleave. When God gives you a husband or wife, you gotta learn you are a teen. No longer can you cling to your parents. There's too much parental influence in marriages of young people. You've got family members running your house. You've got mamas and daddies running your house. You've gotta let your family know this is my wife. This is my husband. I appreciate your counsel. I appreciate your advice. But you've got to stay out of my house because we are a team. No longer can you cleave to your parents. Husbands, when God gives you a good wife, nobody comes before your wife. I love my mama, but I don't put my mama before my wife. Wives, when God gives you a husband, don't put your mama or daddy before your husband. 
and talking about respect, don't be in the street talking about your spouse. Men, you're in the barbershop talking about your wife. She can't cook. She can't clean. She's mean. It's rough going home to that woman. And ladies, stop going to the beauty shop, the salon, talking to your girlfriends about your husband. He's so lazy. He's so trifling. He won't do anything because those same women you're talking to are the same ones trying to get your man. Husbands, you need to be there for your wives. Wives, you need to be there for your husbands. You got to let people know, I refuse to let you disrespect my family. I refuse to let you disrespect my wife or disrespect my husband in front of me. You're not going to do that. I have people coming to you all the time, Pastor, all the time. Oh, Pastor Bird, oh, Pastor Bird, want to hug me. And wife standing by, hold up. You going to speak to me? You going to speak to her too. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you're with your wife, brothers, and that lady comes by, hey. You've got to say, this is my wife, and I would like you to say hello to her as well. Same things, wives. When you're with your husband and that man comes by, hey, girl. You gotta say, this is my husband. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let folk disrespect your spouse in front of you because 90% of the time they're trying to do just that. You've got to let folk know where you stand. You've got to set parameters. You've got to set boundaries. You've got to defend each other. You're on the same team. You've got to respect each other. Paul said, love is suffereth long. Love is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself. Love is not puffed up. Love does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not his own. Love is not easily provoked. Love thinketh no evil. Reciprocity, responsibility, respect. And then finally, number four, romance. Everybody say romance. romance. Love your husband. Love your wife. Love your boyfriend, love your girlfriend, love yourself, and love Jesus. Tell somebody, don't start anything you can't finish. You got to love me through the thick and the thin, through the good and the bad. You got to love me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't start opening up the door for me now. You're not going to open up the door for me in 20 years. Don't start anything you can't finish. Don't be sending me flowers now talking about how much you love me and then five years later, I don't get a thing. Don't carry the umbrella for me in the rain now if you're not gonna carry the umbrella for me in the rain later. Don't be taking me out to Capolini's spur and then we get married and all you wanna do is take me to McDonald's. Talking about super size that. No, no. <laughs> Don't take me out and you let me order color tonic now. And then we get married. Well, you got to order water. Don't do that. <laughs> Husbands, you ought to want your wives to have the best. Wives, you ought to want your husbands to have the best. Let me be honest. I want my wife to have the best. I want her to drive the best. I drive a Mercedes, and guess what she drives? A Mercedes. I want her to drive the best, live the best, look the best, wear the best. So when somebody looks at my wife, they're able to say, she's out of my league. Because she's full. Some sister ought to look at some brother and say, I'm good. I'm fine and full. You've got to know whom God has made you. Because if you're in a relationship and the one that you love is hungry, it's your fault. Because you know what happens? When you're real hungry, you'll eat out of the garbage can. When you're real hungry, you'll eat somebody else's leftovers. When you're hungry, you'll say, give me a piece of that sandwich. 
I know you've been eating on it, but can I share your sandwich? And we've got too many folks sharing other folks' sandwiches. You still love me? That's not as loud as it was. You still love me? Brothers, for those that are married, for those that are going to get married, brothers, when you get married, things start changing. I know when you got married, she was fine. She had it going on. But now she's had some babies for you and things are changing. But you need to look in her eye and say, baby, you're just as fine as you were when I met you. You've got to let her know that she's still the apple of your eye. You've got to still affirm her. Sisters, I know he has done lap now. I know you're saying done lap. What you mean done lap? His stomach done lap. <laughs> done lapped over his belt now. But you got to let him know, baby, I still see that six pack. I still see that six pack that I saw 10 years ago. Nobody else can see it, but I can see it. Amen. Love bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things, endures all things. Brothers, massage her feet. Sisters, scratch his back. Go out to dinner, hang out together, lean and lay on the couch together, laugh together, romance each other. Young people, be nice to each other. Say nice things to one another. Recite poetry together. Go to church together. Ladies, when he invites you out on a date, tell him we can go to church and sit together. Romance each other. You've got to have romance. And you must learn how to romance one another in the tough times. There was a great preacher in the United States. And I learned something from him. He preached his wife's eulogy, the eulogy at his wife's funeral. And he began to tell a story about how he had been out on the road traveling, conducting evangelistic crusades. And he and his wife were going through a very, very, very tough time financially. He came home from revival one night and he walked into their home and the house was dark. There were candles lit all over the house. And what his wife was doing was, she was trying to protect him from some things. He walked in the house and the candle lights, and they were lit everywhere in the house, in every room, and then he went to the dinner table and he saw a candlelight dinner. He said, oh, my baby has fixed a candlelight dinner. He sat down at the table, and he was so proud because of what his wife had done. When he got up, he went to wash his hands first in the bathroom. He flipped on the light switch, but he realized that the lights weren't on. So he left the bathroom and he went throughout the house flipping light switches. And it dawned on him that they did not have the money to pay the light bill. But rather than his wife fuss, and say, you're pitiful, you're trifling, you're a mess, you're away from home preaching and working and we can't even pay the light bill. She got some candles and said, baby, let's just have a candlelight dinner. We'll make the best out of this situation because we're in this thing together. And that's the type of romance you've got to have. Even in those tough times, that's how you get rid of relationship drama, reciprocity, responsibility, respect, romance, 
The world is filled with people who got married for the wrong reasons. Don't get married because you feel pressure from other people. Don't get married because you made a mistake and you got pregnant. Don't make two mistakes. Two wrongs never made a right. Don't get married because you think your biological clock is ticking and time is running out. Marriage is more than that. You can do bad by yourself. It's better to be happily unmarried than to be unhappily married. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whomever you marry will very well determine where you spend eternity. So on Saturday night, when it's just you, you and Jesus get together. Get some popcorn. You and Jesus. Put in a DVD. You and Jesus. And I know you put the right DVD in because it's you and Jesus. Get a blanket. Snuggle up with Jesus. And when somebody calls you and asks you, hey, what are you doing? You say, I'm wrapped up. I'm tied up. I'm tangled up in Jesus. He's all I need. If you have to go to the mall by yourself, then you and Jesus go. If you have to eat dinner by yourself, then you and Jesus eat dinner together. If you have to go to the soccer game by yourself, you and Jesus just go. It'll be cheaper anyway because you won't have to buy soda and drink and chips. Is there anybody here today that knows Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me? What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. You've got to make up your mind. I'm tired of running behind people. I'm tired of letting people play me. I'm tired of the games. I'm tired of all the hurt. If you want to love me, then you've got to love me like Jesus loves me. Reciprocity. Responsibility. Respect. One more time, reciprocity, responsibility, 